The Battle of the Denmark Strait was a Second World War naval battle between ships of the Royal Navy and the German Kriegsmarine, fought on 24 May 1941. The British battleship HMS Prince of Wales and the battlecruiser HMS Hood fought the German battleship Bismarck and the heavy cruiser Prince Eugen, both of which were attempting to break out into the North Atlantic to attack Allied merchant shipping. Less than ten minutes after the British opened fire, a shell from Bismarck struck Hood near her aft ammunition magazines. Soon afterward, Hood exploded, and sank within three minutes with the loss of all but three of her crew. Prince of Wales continued to exchange fire with Bismarck but suffered serious malfunctions in her main armament as the British battleship had not fully worked up after only being completed in late March 1941 and soon broke off the engagement. The battle was considered a major tactical victory for the Germans. But its impact was short-lived. The damage done to Bismarck's forward fuel tanks forced the abandonment of her Atlantic breakout mission and necessitated an escape to safe dry dock facilities in occupied France, producing an operational victory for the British. Incensed by the loss of Hood, a large British force pursued and sank Bismarck three days later. Background the two German ships were expected to sail westward and break through the Greenland-Iceland-UK gap, while passing neutral Sweden in the Baltic Sea. The ships were spotted and reported by the Swedish crews at Gotland and patrol planes. These reports were intercepted by the British Embassy, allowing Royal Navy ships to watch their probable route. Due to cloud and rain, aircraft scheduled to assist in the search could not do so when the German ships attempted their breakout. On the evening of 23 May, despite the advantage of inclement weather to cloak the Germans' presence, the two ships were spotted steaming at 27 knots by the British heavy cruisers HMS Norfolk and Suffolk. These cruisers, each carrying eight 8-inch guns, were patrolling the Denmark Strait under the command of Rear Admiral Frederick Waite Walker. With the help of Suffolk's newly installed radar the cruisers shadowed the German ships, reporting on their movements throughout the night. The next morning, at the exit to the strait between Iceland and Greenland a force of eight British ships was in place to intercept the Germans. The British fleet included the battleship Prince of Wales, the battlecruiser HMS Hood and a screen of six destroyers. Under the command of Vice Admiral Lancelot Holland in Hood, Prince of Wales was a newly commissioned King George V-class battleship, similar to Bismarck in size and power. Prince of Wales had not yet been properly shaken down, and her crew was inexperienced. She still had mechanical problems, especially with her main armament. The ship had sailed with shipyard workers still aboard working on her. For 20 years after her commissioning in 1920, Hood was the largest and heaviest warship in the world, combining eight massive BL 15 inch MKI naval guns with a top speed greater than any battleship on the sea. Hood was the pride of Great Britain's navy, and embodied the world dominance of British naval power. Despite this, Hood had one conspicuous flaw as compared to the super dreadnought battleships she served alongside. As a battle cruiser, much of her bulk was dedicated to extra engine power instead of comprehensive armor coverage. This was in accordance with the prevailing theory. Originally propounded by First Sea Lord Jackie Fisher that speed is armor, while her 12-inch belt armor was considered sufficient against most capital ships she was likely to encounter, her 3 inches of deck armor was only rated against shell splinters, leaving her badly unprotected against plunging fire at long range. At the time of her commissioning in World War I, naval gunnery was severely inaccurate at the ranges necessary to produce plunging fire, and Hood's greater speed and maneuverability were rightly seen as an acceptable trade-off. However, as the accuracy of naval gunfire increased in the interwar period, Hood was eventually scheduled to receive an upgrade in 1939 that would have doubled her deck armor to six inches but the outbreak of World War II meant the upgrade never took place. 
She thus sought he to war at a marked disadvantage against the new capital ships of the Axis. Aware of Hood's inadequate protective armour distant to the southeast of where the battle took place, Vice Admiral Holland's superior deliberated on ordering Vice Admiral Holland to have Prince of Wales sail ahead of Hood. Ultimately, Admiral Tovey did not give the order, later saying, I did not feel such interference with such a senior officer justified. Prelude Plan gone awry Vice Admiral Holland's battle plan was to have Hood and Prince of Wales engage Bismarck while Suffolk and Norfolk engaged Prince Eugen. He signalled this to Captain John C. Leach a Prince of Wales but did not radio Rear Admiral Wake Walker, who as commander of the 1st Cruiser Squadron directed Suffolk and Norfolk for fear of disclosing his location. Instead, he observed radio silence. Holland hoped to meet the enemy at approximately 200. Sunset in this latitude was at 1.51. Bismarck and Prince Eugen would be silhouetted against the sun's afterglow while Hood and Prince of Wales could approach rapidly, unseen in the darkness, to arrange close enough not to endanger Hood with plunging fire from Bismarck. The Germans would not expect an attack from this quarter, giving the British the advantage of surprise. The plan's success depended on Suffolk's continually unbroken contact with the Germans' ships. However, Suffolk lost contact from 028. For 90 minutes, Holland neither sighted the Germans' ships nor received any further news from Norfolk or Suffolk. Reluctantly, Holland ordered Hood and Prince of Wales to turn south-southwest but he detached his destroyers which continued searching to the north. Before contact was re-established, the two squadrons missed each other by a hair's breadth. Had the German ships not altered course to the west at 1.41 to follow the line of the Greenland ice pack, the British would have intercepted them much earlier than they did. The British destroyers were just 10 miles to the southeast when the Germans made this course change. If the visibility had not been reduced to 3 to 5 miles, the German vessels would probably have been spotted distant on the horizon. And if the ship's lookouts are in a crow's nest, the observable distance is even further. Just before 300, Suffolk regained contact with Bismarck. Hood and Prince of Wales were 35 miles away, slightly ahead of the Germans. Holland signaled to steer toward the Germans and increased speed to 28 knots. Suffolk's loss of contact had placed the British at a disadvantage. Instead of the swiftly closing head-on approach Holland had envisioned, he would have to converge at a wider angle, much more slowly. This would leave Hood vulnerable to Bismarck's plunging shells for a much longer period. The situation worsened further when, at 3.20, Suffolk reported that the Germans had made a further course alteration to the west, placing the German and British squadrons almost a beam of each other. At 5.35, lookouts on Prince of Wales spotted the German ships 17 miles away. The Germans, already alerted to the British presence through their hydrophonic equipment, picked up the smoke and masts of the British ships ten minutes later. At this point, Holland had the option of joining Suffolk in shadowing Bismarck and waiting for Tovey to arrive with King George V and other ships to attack or to order his squadron into action. He chose the latter at 5.37. The rough seas in the strait kept the destroyers' roll to a minimum and the cruisers Norfolk and Suffolk would be too far behind the German force to reach the battle.